One, two, three. Tag me in podcast. Again with another episode. Myself, Anton. And Ola. Back oh, again. Yes. Oh, yes. Like we always say, back again for mm. another episode. <laughs> and today's topic is all about the difference in growth and fixed mindsets. Mindsets, yeah. Or just mindset as a whole. Mindset Are you going for the, the mindset? Thing? Mindset, mindset. But yeah, the sort of... What's sort a mindset? Of, mm, that question. Mm. So you got this woman called um, Carol Dweck, and she kind of coined this term of the kind of fixed mindset versus growth mindset. Yeah. And the basic sort of premise behind the meaning is she basically she's basically saying that with a sort of fixed mindset, you believe that your sort of like personality, your character and your overall traits are fixed. And yeah. Sort of like, you know some people believe it's fixed at birth. You know some people would be like, yeah, you're either small. It's innate, not. this is the way I am. Yeah, this is it. There's this no is, way this to change. Is it. Yeah. Whereas the growth mindset is more of like, okay, these are my traits and characteristics. I can build on and develop what I have yeah. and who I am as a person. Um, and so those are the sort of like two main kind of mindsets and like she kind of did so a mindset's kind of like a way that you see yourself right so the way you see yourself the way you see yourself in the world and how you sort of navigate life essentially and yeah the way you sort of view things really mm. um and so, so she's done i've got a fixed mindset this is the way i see myself this is it i can't change i didn't get it i'm never going to get it so but you could you could be you know you could be in a space of like i'm the best just because of that mindset because from your previous years you've always been imagine you're smart and yeah. you, you're great at maths from the age of 10 like, you're going to have that fixed mindset, right? You're going to be like, yeah, no one can touch me. Boom. Ooh, it's dangerous. <laughs> but it's true. There are, I mean, there are a lot of people who walk around like that. They've just been told and been led to believe that they are. Like, you're the one. You're it the could smartest. be. There's no yeah. denying that. It could be. It's, it's a di- I, I feel it's quite dangerous. It's, it's a limitation, it's, it's, right? It's, that's the thing. Yeah. That is the thing. It's obviously got its ups and downs, but it is very sort of limiting. Um, and she just did sort of like various studies. Um... And like there was one interesting one she did with like young children actually where a whole study is based on kids really isn't yeah it? where she was kind of like looking at these young children gave them like different tests um a few of them failed a few of them passed um as as it happens but then instead of kind of going you failed what she said was not yet which yeah, I was really, really interesting that was really really interesting i was like huh. so not yet in the sense of what so you're not yet in the sense not, of you're not there not just yet. not ready just yet as opposed to you failed so using myself as an example, I'm studying like professional qualifications at work, did an exam, one, so there's like two parts to it, passed the first one, I was like, yeah, got this, did the second one, then I said I flopped it. And when it when I flopped, it just kind of shows you didn't pass, you failed. Yeah. I'm just there. I like, should have lost. <laughs> yeah, wait, um, that was months of preparation. Look at this guy. <laughs> so, um, so for me, it was like, rah. And this was like back in summertime. Um, so it kind of put me off getting back on the horse, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if I had a scene, not yet, Ola, that's a completely different story. It's, uh, you're getting there, you're not so quite you're, there. Are you saying it's the language? language? It is the way things are like said and interpreted. Mm. So like the way things, or like the way people take things. So by you saying you failed, it's like, rah, man, that's it. As opposed to not yet, what you're basically saying is... Mm, you felt this time around, yeah, but, but there's next room time. for improvement. Precisely. If like you just put on. a bit more work into it, then it'd be yet. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that, is that that's the absolutely spot on? And I think that should just, for me, I feel like that should be rolled out in schools and everywhere else in life. Mm. Like if you don't necessarily pass, not all the time, but if you don't pass, you don't pass your driving test. Not yet. Yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. If you were to kind of put yourself in one of these boxes, what would you say, fixed or growth? It's hard because I think you can jump in between the two depending on what day it is and what you're doing. So I'm definitely someone who's always striving to become the best version of myself. So I've got that growth mindset. Um, But there are times where I have that fixed mindset. So if you tell me um, I want you to race against Usain Bolt and I want you to win, I'll tell you no. I I know that I can't win that. So there's that element of almost processing and identifying what I'm what I can do, yeah, which might be a limitation. It might be that, that kind of putting yourself in that little kitchen yeah. or that fixed mindset place. But yeah, that's where I'm stubborn because like, if someone said that to me, i will be like, oh, let's try it. I'll be like, why not? Part, part, no, but a part of me is like, you're going to lose, man. But you, another you part of me... never run nine... It doesn't even matter, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> someone put you on a, like, you're in a lane next to you saying, Bolt. Stay in your lane, yeah. You're racing. Stay. Yeah, you stay in your lane. You're running. You're going to get, fam, it's a race. What's the worst going to happen? You're going to lose. You lost against the fastest man in the world. So oh, what, are you man. taking an L? 
That's that's what's the point of being look so you're gonna actually still you're gonna warm up, I'll you're gonna you got a potential to pull a muscle, yes, you know, pull your hamstring, I'll be race. out for two weeks. I will race you saying okay, cool. I will I'll No, I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. But to, I think like having that element because with a fixed mindset, you're telling yourself that you you are not gonna win, so there's no point doing it. Yeah, and you won't even try. That's the thing, like that for me is the main thing. It's the fact of not even telling yourself that it's the fact of you don't even try. And I feel like that kind of holds people, or limits people in a lot of different areas in their mm. life, whether it be with relationships, whether it be like that um, promotion at work or anything or like that 100k bench press in the gym. It's always that, nice. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't, I'm not strong enough. Yeah. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not hard working or smart enough. Why not try? Uh, yeah. yeah, you could, you could get rejected by her. Like you might flop on the way, you might not get the job, but at least try. Because what a lot of people don't learn, understand, and this is where kind of like the growth mindset really kind of sets in, is that it's the learning. You learn from yeah, those experiences. Yeah. And like you so what you're trying to say? You're that's like, the point I'm trying to get. It's the experiences. And like you always say, it's your experiences that shape you. But if you've got no experiences and nothing to back it, then you're going to just stay in that kind of like vicious cycle. Stay in your lane. Yeah, it's just, it is crazy. So you're on this growth mindset thing, yeah? Growth, for the most part. But I think like you, I also obviously have my like limitations. Yeah. Like, um, a perfect example, there was a job going at work. I told you about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a job. I was like, yeah, this job looks yeah, all right. Yeah. But then like, on the last day, annoyingly... Um, annoyingly? Some guy come up to me. I let him type me out. Um, some guy come up to me. He's like, yeah, there's another guy that's going to apply. He's got other qualifications. Apparently, he's good friends with everyone in the team. Apparently, the job's his already. And I was just like... Oh. Part of the reason was because I hadn't like done the application. So I was like, oh, it's going to be long. And a part of me was like... Oh. What's the point? Can I message you? I remember. I yeah, I remember you were like, I was like, oh man, no, 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 no. why did I tell him? I was like, oh, no, I've got to explain. Good luck with the application. Yeah. And he was like, ah. Oh, I was like, um, So we lose term. Like, he's like, um, um, uh, Essentially, what happened was. Yeah, like, I was just like, what? I just, it's just, it's just, apartment was just like, there was literally this fixed mindset of, what's the point? This guy's gonna, this guy didn't even know, by the way. Um, I was like, oh, I'm not going to get it. That guy probably planning to leave the company. Probably, yeah. Like, I'm just there like, oh man, why didn't I? And then after, obviously, I was like, oh, why didn't I apply? Mm. Like, what was the worst that could have happened? I would have said no. Okay. Yeah. I've heard no before. But then, again, for me, it was missing that experience of the potential for an interview where I could have learned questions that they might have asked or I could have gotten a job. Mm. Like, And it's just that sort of thing. And I feel like a lot of people, like I said, hold themselves back by not just putting themselves in those situations. It's fear, isn't it? It's fear of failure. Because I think there's a lot of it that stems back to the way that we're, we're brought up. So, mm. you know, talking about Caroline, where her whole book's looking at child psychology yeah. and the way that they're raised and stuff like that. And when you go through education, you're constantly told, like you were saying about, mm. not yet, you're, you're kind of told, oh, you failed. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. Ah, oh, sorry, little Timmy's going to have to be put into the low set because he's not good enough. Mm. And then a child kind of learns that and they're like, they don't want to be in that position of constantly throwing. So when he, you know, man, it kind of manifests into the adult life. So yeah. they kind of avoid being put into those kind of difficult situations, those yeah, challenging yeah. situations, because they're like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fail. Like, yeah. No, no, thank you. So they keep to what they know and what they believe is innate in them, what they believe they, they are good at. So these are the skills I'm good at. Well, I'm, I'm good at lifting, I don't know, I'm, I'm good at fixing windows. And that's my job for the rest of my life. That's a fixed mindset. But I think, if you can identify, yeah, I'm good at that, but actually, I'm thinking of maybe doing a bit of brickwork. And then you, you take it to another level, and you're like, ah, oh, maybe I can start making tables. Like, you start experiencing, you start you push putting yourself out there. Yeah. You start learning. So like, for me, if I was going to put a percentage on what box I sit in, I think I'm 90% growth. Boy, that's, that's solid. I like that. I don't, but there's that 10% and that 10% could be overpowering sometimes. Sometimes it's like nine, so you can't do that. Mm. So like, what's a good example? I've always wanted to be able to do like a headstand. In fact, I want to do a backflip. Just, you know them guys who just do tumbles, just like yeah, yeah. cartwheel, backflip. Yo, oh, guys. Oh, cars <laughs> well. yeah. I want to do that, but I'm like, mm. Mm, so like sometimes when I'm at home, I just do a little back, you know, a little handstand in fact, and I just land on my back. I think I did it last time you was around. Yeah, yeah, I did it. <laughs> and it's like that big dent in my floor. Boom, <laughs> boom. So I'm like, you're right, man. <laughs> and then there's times when I'm thinking, maybe it's ain't for me. Mm. I'm like, nah, I'll just leave it to another time. Nah, actually, there's no point. Like, what's the point of me even learning? Yeah. But there's moments when I'm like, yo, like, it'd be so cool. Like, there's an image on my vision board that someone just 
doing all these flexible stuff and jumping about. Like, you've got to be that guy. Be that guy and stuff. So, yeah, growth mindset. Like, for me, especially my first job, like, real job outside uni, I went from graduating to a senior role. So I didn't even go for, like, a normal role. I went for a senior role. I went for that job. And I, I sat in the interview. I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah. Man, was shook. Sweating and everything. And I was like, I'm here now. What can I learn from it? Yeah. And I got the job. And I was like, all right, cool. Now I've got to grow. Yeah. And like, at that stage, <sighs> I had a lot to learn. Steep learning curve, I'd imagine. Crazy. And then I continue to do that. Like, every single... I've had three promotions in the space of four years. Jeez. And the final one, the one that I say final, my latest one, one yeah. I even went into the interview. I was just like, yeah, I know this role is probably like a year, like too soon for me, but I'm still going to go for it because... I've seen how I've grown, like how I've grown <clears throat> from the previous time when I first started this company. I could see myself doing it again. So I always feel like, yeah, you got to grow, you got to learn, you got to put yourself in those uncomfortable situations. Like, yeah. now this chair is hot. Prickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. And it was you who kind of made me aware of the, the fix and growth mindset. Yeah. We were sitting in the car and you was like telling me about, I think you read the book, right? Yeah, I remember, I remember reading, I've read like a good few articles and chapters in books on it. Yeah. So I was just like, I didn't realise how deep this was. Like, it's quite a serious thing. I didn't know what it was until you actually identified, like, there's a difference in mindsets. Yeah. Because I, I didn't realise why I used to get annoyed at people. So like, if someone okay. was just like, oh, um, you know, when you, especially in like the workplace, people are like, oh, um, I've been in this job for like 10 years and, mm. you know, I, I hate it, but I don't see myself doing anything else. This is all I know. And I used to get annoyed at that. I used to get annoyed at their, their being like, what is wrong with you? Why are you so complacent? Like, yeah. what is wrong with you? And then when you told me about the fixed mindset, I was like, oh, shit, that's what it is. So when I come across people with fixed mindsets, I'm like, uh, I feel uncomfortable around them. I don't want to be yeah. in their Because I see it as a form of like... Like, like limitation. You know, yeah. Like that glass ceiling. Yeah. It's just like, nah, get rid of that. Oh, man. Get rid of that. It's just such a shame. But you know what? One aspect of... It's not a shame. I wouldn't say it's a shame. Because it's... For me, because it's like, you know that they have potential to do and be more. Yeah. But because they've got that, I can't. I can't. This is my limit. It's like, you can see that potential get wasted away. But I'm saying this in the stance of like, there may be someone out there who's like highly successful in what they're doing mm -hmm. and be fixed fix mindset, but be a boss at what they're doing. Yeah. So like, I always see the other side of it. Like, mm -hmm. I think there's a benefit from being fixed. I'm trying to think. If you're good at what you're doing, let me put that out there. Okay, so if you're <laughs> successful, you're fixed, you've got that fixed successful. So let's say you're putting in 100%, you're always going to put in 100% mm. and then you're going to be successful. In that regard, yeah. But do you think, what do you think the percentage is realistically of people that are like that? Because oh, that's okay. what I'm worried about. No, no, yeah, because no, no. I'm just like, ah. yeah. But no, like when, when it is, that's, I think it's one of those things that's like, when it's good, it's good. But at the same time, like when it's bad, yeah. so you've got those people who've been there for like 10, 20, 30 years. They don't see themselves growing and it's like, oh man, you've got potential. Mm. You've got so much, like just keep pushing. Um, but you know, one aspect of it, and you sort of mentioned the like uncomfortable part is like criticism. So apparently with people with a fixed mindset. Well, apparently it's true. <laughs> yeah, the fact is, people with like that fixed mindset, um, when they're faced with criticism, it's what? What? You don't say to me. What? No, nah, it's like they kind of don't, go, they go. don't they're like, move back. They don't want to hear it. It's not true. Whereas people with that growth mindset take it as, okay, cool. All right, cool. So this is where you feel like could improve. Mm. Like, hmm. How how does Anton take criticism? Really well. Yeah? Really well. As long as you've got the evidence behind it, then yeah. I can, I'll support you. So my thing is, if someone says something about me, like put, puts a tie on me, so I don't know. Oh, Anthony, you're annoying. I'm like, okay, why am I annoying? <laughs> <laughs> At least tell me why. Like, what yeah. did I do? Help me. Because that's the constructive part of it. So it's saying, you know what? You're annoying and this is why you're annoying. Oh, okay. So what can I do different? Maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do that. Safe. I could take yeah. it on board. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I always take it on board because you're not perfect. I think that's the difference as that's well. Thing, yeah. So a fixed mindset will see themselves as a finished product. Where it's like, kind of like, for me, I remember I had a blog and it was called Becoming a Finished Product or oh, yeah. Becoming a Finishing Product. And like, 
I know I put that big statement out there, but I knew I would never become that finished product because I know there's always something that I can grow in. Yeah. So even if I'm number one at golf or number one at, I don't know, tennis or something like that, there's always someone that's going to be better than you. That's, that's going to be learning, homing on their craft coming and eventually coming after me. Coming for that spot. So if I've got that fixed mindset and I'm scared to like take risks, do a new development or doing like a different training so I've got a new personal trainer or something like that. He's like, Antoine, I heard about this German backstroke thing. You need to try it. I'm like, oh, mm, I'm not too sure of that. Not mm. heard of that. And then I say, no, we're not doing it. We're sticking it to that way. There's potential that this German kid who's doing this German backstroke is just going to come and just <laughs> bus paddle past you. you know I don't know why I said <laughs> backstroke for tennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But you know what? I'm actually, I'm with you on that. I think for me as well that sort of constructive criticism is really important. Like when it comes to criticism in general, I'm like, what? I don't want to hear it. Mm. I don't ask you for your unsolicited. Who are you? Yeah. But for me, it's if it's constructive, if it's, oh, I've noticed when you do the work, you do it in this way, because we will do it in that format. You do it in this format because this is the format that's used throughout the company or whatever. Mm. Why not consider using it? Okay, cool. Yeah. I hear it. But when it's, you're doing it wrong. Why? What? Yeah. Who are you? You don't even yeah. work for this company. But you I guess, know. so you are someone that... I, I to for me, I'm, I'm 100% open to it. Yeah. Um, again, I don't sort of take it personal. I just take it as, cool, this person has seen like an inefficiency or a way to improve. An example is um, Chelsea on the event. After, you know how people were kind of complimenting us. Oh, you guys are really good. Mm. How many times have you done this before? I'm like, what? It's my first time then yeah. flossing. Um, <laughs> and some girl was like, it was really, really good. Um, I felt that you could have so you know that we were kind of giving a microphone out, um, she kind of felt that a lot of the people were talking too much and she was like, she's done it before it happens. She was like, next time, just kind of take the microphone away or just turn, turn your body away <laughs> kind of thing. She was like, yeah, you kind of have to be cutthroat because a lot of people are just hogging with their words. And, yeah. and I was just there, I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, I appreciate the fact that she said that. But yeah. in my head, I was like, I know, I can imagine how a lot of people may have taken offence to her saying it because at the time, you need to remember that I didn't even know her. So imagine a random person come up to you and be like, the way you're walking isn't, why are you walking like that? And it's a bit like, whoa. But I think because I took it in my stride and I took it as, all right, cool, it's constructive. Hmm. She's got the experience. She knows what she's saying. Fair enough, I don't know her, but I'm like, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. So I think, yeah, as long as there's like a context to it and around it and it's constructive, I think it's fine. You're all about it. It's, it's all, it's, 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 it's good. It's like a green light. Yeah. Another interesting point I want to make, or no, a question I want to ask. Dun, dun, dun. Do you think that, so you know some people have a fixed or like growth, or some people are like interchangeable. Do you think someone who's maybe completely fixed or completely growth can say, switch over or become the other? Because you know with it, it's like people get... I think age might play a big factor. That's what I was going to say, like people can get stuck in their ways. Because like after a while... If you don't go to gym, it's going to be a lot harder for you to start going. Mm. The same with jobs or like kind of pushing different things in your life. And it's like if you've always thought negatively and no, always thought positively and I might, it's going to be really hard with age as well to kind of switch. Like I just, I've always tried to, I've got friends who I know have got that fixed mindset of I can't, we can't. One of my good boys. Don't include me. Yeah, like one of my good boys is like, whenever I want to do anything, whether it's like a business idea, well, I, like there was one time I sent him a picture of like this beautiful woman. And the first thing he said was, we, we, can't, we, get we can't get those type of girls. We can't, just give up. I'm just there like, yo, let it get two blue ticks first and then say, no. like, man's already like, no, we can't. And for me, I'm just like, I don't know if this product will change. Like, I feel like that's it. So the question is, yeah, do you sort of feel that people who are in one kind of mindset can gear over or switch into like the mm. other side I think yeah it's definitely possible it's all about your willingness to learn so when you told me about growth and fixed mindset my first thing was you've got to allow yourself to be teachable like when you fall into that growth mindset you're teachable when you're fixed you're unteachable you just don't want to hear it from no one you think yeah this is the way life is this is how it should be so it's literally you have to come to a place mentally especially if you identify that you're just stuck where you are, you're not progressing, you don't understand why. Mm. And then you realise that every single opportunity that comes in front of you, you're like, oh no, I'm too scared, you're too shook. 
or someone hits you with some criticism, you're like, nah, shut up, shut your mouth, mm. your mother, and anything mm. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that is a level of self awareness yeah. and being like, bro, why, why am I actually behaving like this? Why, what am I fearing? Like they say, fear is that like false evidence appearing real. You're like, ah. Oh. So mm. what's actually happening here? If I want to go to the next place, I can do it. So it's a change of mindset. It's, yeah. Okay, so it's a change of mindset. Um, <laughs> 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 mindset. <laughs> Growth mindset is a change of mindset. Um, it is possible. I think you have to just take little steps towards it. It's not going to be a change overnight. I think uh, a change could just believe in yourself. Like, or even looking at other people around you and saying... Because I'm sure, you know... People might have said I had a fixed mindset once upon a time. Mm. How how did that change? But then that must have been Anton changing. So what I'm kind of asking is like, say we've got a friend Timmy. We're always using Timmy. If we see Timmy's a bit negative, Timmy's always just shade, blah blah blah. We're like, okay, cool. We need to. We want Timmy. Like Timmy's got potential, man. Timmy can be the greatest playwright. He's got play for days, but he doesn't really put his potential. Do you think that we? Oh, as in have an influence on him. Yeah, because I feel like mm. we can only we can take Timmy to like the water, but we can't make him drink. That make classic drown. Kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like we, I feel like we can't ultimately change him. I feel like it's up to him. But in saying that, it does hurt me because it's like I can see his potential, but he can't see it, or he sees it and like he's got that fixed mindset of no matter how much effort I put in, I can't improve. Mm. And I guess. From our standpoint, is we can know you, so, I, I, so your question is, can you change? Can we change him? If we, so you think you, you can't? If we, I feel like if we like, I feel like we can't. We can like shout, we can hit him, we can do whatever. He's a grown man, he's mm. going to do what he wants to do. Yeah, because they don't like challenges, do they? Like, it's just, it's, so like, it's like, I challenge you to do this. No, why? I'm mm. not going to do that. Um, could you change them? No. Timmy, change, man. What's wrong with you? I don't think you can. Definitely not. Because um, you can give them all the opportunities. You can say, next week, I've got a meeting with the number one playwright in the UK. In fact, in Europe. Wait. Got a meeting for the both of you. He's like, nah. Timmy, I need you to show up. Nah, it's not for me. Timmy is savage. I'm happy to work for this independent um, theatre company in the middle of Dorset. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I it's guess it's, it's, uh, okay, but okay, no, saying that, with those people, so with Timmy, he's happy, you, is he happy, you, that's the question, is it, if he's happy and content, then, then we ain't got no right to, yeah. to change Timmy, yeah, what was he going to say, but if he wasn't happy, he complained about it, yeah, didn't want to listen to us, mm. what can you do, there's nothing you can do, yeah, true, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing, that's the thing. Like, I would bloody, like, sit Timmy down and be like, Timmy, I'm telling you, as a bro, like, you've got all these opportunities. The problem is you. Mm. The harshness. The problem is you. Like, I need you to look deep in the mirror and just look at who you are now. You keep even complaining about these things, but you're not willing to make that jump. Look at so-and-so. And you have to use example. So, um, I was learning about status quo. So, a lot of people stay where they are based on their status quo. So, I can't change because it's impossible. Mm. And what you need to do is say, what's the cost? So there's a cost associated with changing. People yeah. are like, oh, if I change, then I potentially could fail. I could potentially lose 500 pounds if I invest two grand into a stock. Mm. Oh, I'm too scared. But then you say to them, what's the cost of staying the same? Mm. If you stay the same way right now, what's the cost? And you've got to flip it. And you've got to basically say to them, this is the cost. If you stay the same way, then you're going to be... I don't know, surviving to pay your mortgage. You've got another child coming along, so boy, it's going to get a lot tougher. If you don't make this change now, then it's not looking good. Yeah. It's not looking healthy. Yeah. But you also got to add into this element of an example, a role model, someone who's done it, someone who can inspire them. You know Charles. Mm. You know Charles was in the same situation last time, and he was, he was a um, story writer, and then, you know, he wasn't really making the big moves, and then his child came along, and then shit got tough. And then, do you remember, his girl told him that he should go here. And she said, if you don't, then she's leaving. And then look at him now. Do you not see that he did that premiere last week in um, Leicester Square? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's possible, isn't it? Oh, so you just shake that whole status quo. You've got to shake that foundation yeah. to make someone do it. So you can take that aspect. So there is a small potential that you can change someone from a fix to a growth. 
But ultimately, it's like down to them, isn't it? It's down to them. Um, but you have to paint a picture for them to kind of see what life could be like. So there is that aspect of you putting the effort in to kind of make it maybe that bit easier for them or to kind of show them the potential. Hmm. But you know, I like the fact you mentioned like uh, opportunity cost. So like the cost of you not making a move or not kind of going for that chance or opportunity hmm. and then the cost of you losing it. And I think a lot of people don't realise that. Like We don't think that way. That's the thing. <laughs> like, that's the thing. It's like when people have maybe 10, 20 pounds, a lot of people or 100 pounds, they may not think about the stock they could buy but they might buy like a pair of shoes and they don't realise by you buying those pairs of shoes, you've lost the opportunity to buy, say, potentially Bitcoin. And this was a few years back. Hey, you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. Like, look at look at the people that are winning now. Yeah. Um, it's just absolutely crazy because I know, I remember I read like a good few articles. There was one that if you invested a thousand pounds in Bitcoin, now it would be like 3.5. And I'm like, Mil- what? M's. I'm like, are you mad? But I, went, I probably went and looked at the graph, I was like, nah. <laughs> got my calculator, <laughs> I was like, that would have been okay, so like, four, and okay. What? Nah. And it's just, it's quite like, hindsight is such a beautiful thing, and I think it's just one of those things where people need to maybe, not change the way, but maybe just in addition to the way they think, think about that opportunity cost. Mm. But you're not going to that networking event, you didn't meet so-so-and-so, who was really nice and in a good mood, and who would have given you the opportunity to have met their partner who is in the business of, yeah, starting businesses and you want to start a business. And like a, an hour kind of coffee meeting with that person would have literally shaped your business. Mm. And a lot of people just don't think about that. Yeah. And it's just, it's just crazy how this all stems from like mindset. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. And so I guess the question is, how do you identify what mindset you sit in? I guess it's sort of like looking at different challenges and situations and kind of assessing how you answer or react in those situations. So thinking to yourself, can you lift this weight? If there was a job opportunity, would you go for it? Mm. And then looking at the answers and kind of going from there. So with me, I use like gym as like a good example. Like, I'm like, right, cool, I can't lift 120. I want to be able to lift 120 to 140. Now I can't do it. What am I going to do? And I always said to myself, next time I go into the gym, I want to just lift a madness. And every time I do, I usually do achieve it. There's mm. been a few times when I've been like, no, no, hell. I haven't got it, but I'm just like, at least I tried. Yeah. The growth, because that's the thing. By me, even not hitting it, I'm still like growing a big chest. I'm like, oh, I can feel the pain, the growth is there. Um, and yeah, just kind of answering myself, like answering different sort of questions. So yeah, looking at jobs or looking at different situations or looking at books. And this woman kind of mentioned like really good points and how you may not feel you're at a particular point in your life, but by reading books and by acquiring knowledge, you can see that the people you aspire to your mentors the people you look up to they started off as normal people yeah and look at what they've achieved mm. like using the sort of kfc example and like ford and how these men who started these companies literally didn't start the companies until like what late 40s was yeah, it that's ford, another one thing of them was like well, late that's 60s whole thing, yeah, yeah. We're, we're in a generation where we idolize people who made it by the age of 20, 20, 20 30, 30, 30, yeah get stuff. rich by 30 yeah, die yeah. trans yeah, like yeah. Yeah it's not necessarily like realistic. I think people just need to have those realistic kind of boundaries put in place of what to expect and when to expect it. Mm. I think now we're at a point where people are very just fixated on the end result. I have to have this by this point. It doesn't always work like that. And it's more so about the journey. The next five years, forget about the 10 million you're gonna make. The next five years are gonna shape you as mm. a person, as a human, as an, as an individual. A lot of your growth and development is gonna happen in these next five years. Think about the people you're going to meet, the relationships yeah. you're going to form, the lessons you're going to learn, the hardships, like the ups and the downs. Like these are things that you have to factor in and think about, as opposed to I'm going to have ten million. That ten million isn't necessarily going to make you happier in life. Mm. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that money is like a means to an end. It's a tool to be used, like heat or like water or gas mm. or whatever. Like it's a tool. It's not to be on an end all. Um, but it's just it is a lot to think about. I don't know. Yeah, um, I feel like growth is going to be this continuous thing for me. Like, I think court life crisis, I was like, oh, I need to find a passion. And I realised the one thing I'm passionate about is just learning about life and treating every day as a new day and saying, look, I learned this today. So, like, when I reflect, so it was your birthday last week? Do, 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 do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, in that moment, did you reflect and go, yo, I've one, I'm one year older. How have I grown? I actually did, you know. I just sat down, I was like, I was just in my room by myself, popcorn, watching a movie, I paused it. I was like, what? Minus 20, beep. 
I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just thinking, I was like, in the last year, like, look at what has happened. Not even in the last, like, last couple of months, it's like, podcast, kind of like, promotion at work, um, hosting a show. I never thought I'd do that. Mm. Travelling to Thailand. Like, yeah, a country, it's in yeah the, uh, country that's been on my list for like, years. Mm. Like, starting a little side business, meeting people, like, it's just, and obviously a lot more. So I'm just like, Wait, what? Yeah. This is, and it's like, I'm just kind of looking at how I'm getting one step closer to all these different things I've achieved or things that were on my list. And I'm just like, if I'd have had that fixed mindset, <laughs> would I be where I am now? You would have got yeah. way, way, way. Been like, it would have been, oh, I don't know if Tag Me can get any more views than, it currently, than it's currently getting. Mm. I don't think I can host this event. Mm. I'm really sure I don't think I can do it. Mm. Um, I don't think I can go to that country because of how much it's going to cost. I don't understand the language. I'll be out of place. Yeah. They don't rate me, this and that. Um, I don't think I can start a business. What, me? Mm. No, I can't do that. Then it was like, okay, cool, break it down. How can we do it? How are we going to achieve it? We can do it because that person's done it. If they can do it, you can do it. Don't mm. give up. And it was like doing all these little steps to achieve all these different things. And it's just looking back, reflecting, and it's like, look at what, has been achieved. Yeah. Look at what has been achieved. Like, this is crazy. Think about the next year. Okay, what are the next steps? What do we want next? And yeah, kind of like yeah. going forward and it's just like, just getting it done. Yeah. I'm it's definitely, just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I'm a big fan of just, even my younger siblings, trying to instill that growth mindset into them and just encouraging them. So, encouraging them to learn yeah. as opposed to this being successful or achieving stuff. Just be like, yo, you tried, man done well man like yeah. you're learning like look how you remember last week when you couldn't do it and look what you're doing now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's big movement because i feel growth is almost similar to like when you get a plant like it starts like some little little, little, little seed. seed yeah and then over time you water it you nurture it and that's the key thing about growth mindset you nurture what you've got you're like all right cool i've got this but how can i make this better how can i make this grow how do i turn this little seed into a forest Jeez. That's what everyone talking that's, about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm with you on that because, like, again, even this sort of weekend just gone, I was with my little um, cousin. Um, he's 10 now. We're all playing football with him, FIFA 18. We're beating him, like, we're just king this. But I'm like, come on, man, is the paddy even on? Oh, he's just true. there. <laughs> and then, like, he's like, obviously, after a few matches, he was battered. He's like, I can't, I can't, it's too hard. I'm just there, like, when we first played you, we were beating you, like, 6 1. Mm. Now it's 4 2. You may not see it. No, 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 but look at the ratio. Look at the ratio. Yeah, obviously I had to convert it for him. I was throwing bare shade. I was like, you've improved. But no, it went down to that one one. Uh, cool. And he was That's still like, he was like, I can't, I'm flop. I'm like, yo, brother, like yeah. you are losing 10 1. Yeah. We were literally dancing on you. We were dabbing on you. Yeah. You were almost in tears. Now it's like, yeah. now it's even. Yeah. In the space of a couple hours, like, you've improved. Like, mm. keep going, keep going. Keep pushing, and obviously eventually he beat us. And I was like, "Yeah," well, that, that's how life is. Like life doesn't what? Oh, because life doesn't take prisoners. Oh, you got the talent in it. Life doesn't take prisoners. Like you can cry all you want, think life cares. So do you Keep know about mastery? mastery? Ten thousand. The ten thousand hours. Ten thousand hours. Do you believe that? Though? So there's a debate. This is going to be quick, kind of like sad. Yeah. <laughs> but they say that some things are innate, so you naturally skill the talent. Sometimes that's the lift. Mm. But really, what it is is. I think we're all kind of equal, we're all sort of equal. It's just how much effort and energy you put into put it. it. Yeah. And I feel like some people, they focus on playing, I don't know, the piano from an early age, and that's all they know. And that's what they believe in. So if someone said, hey, do you want to learn how to play the guitar? They'd be like, nope, piano. Mm. So this is why I think fixed mindset can be good, because you're focusing on that one thing. You're not getting sidetracked by anything else. Tunnel vision. Tunnel vision at all. But I guess, do you believe in, in mastery for 10,000? Ah, I mean, initially when I kind of saw the concept, I was like, okay, this makes sense. If you, you, you get out what you put, if you put the hours in, you're going to get out. But then obviously I've read like a lot of kind of things that like debunk it and I'm like, actually, I haven't put that many hours. I haven't even put half those hours and I've got these results. It's not all about kind of like manpower in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a bit 50-50 at the moment. I'm, I'm sort of, yeah, half and half. Yeah, so what you put in is what you... Yeah, I do out. believe that, obviously, the more you put into something, the more you're going to get out. I don't necessarily believe in the whole 10,000 hours per se. More um, than 20. <laughs> <laughs> but 
ten thousand hours per se, but I do believe that yeah, putting in the energy, yeah. you're gonna get that kind of energy back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes it does sort of depend on what you're doing. So like something like guitar or piano, which is like fixed in terms of what you're gonna learn. If you play these play these keys, you're gonna get this sound. You're gonna get this kind of play. Hmm. It may make sense in that in that yeah. kind of concept. Because I know a lot of kind of young children start at the age of like three. Right. Plays your keys, always like mad. Right. Three just done like. <laughs> Meanwhile, Crazy. I'm at home at 20. Playing kings, playing kings. But yeah, growth mindset is the one for me. Um, like I said, I'm cool with people being fixed mindset. Sending yes, <laughs> fixed <Six> mindset. <laughs> but I can't be associated with them. Right. <laughs> you stay there in your fixed box. Do you know what? It irritates me. It actually irritates me. It's yeah. just like, oh man, because. It's almost a thin line between being fixed mindset and then being negative. Or just stubborn. Yeah. I'd say negative. Do you reckon it's stubborn? I guess stubborn, stubbornly negative or negatively stubborn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't or you won't. You just don't want to. I can't. Don't want to. Yeah. Not for me. Not good at it. Did you even try? No. Nope. Don't want to. Hey. Timmy, yeah. please. Timmy. Hey. Okay. Timmy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm with you on that. It's sort of, I, I'd definitely sort of say I'm more in the camp of um, growth mindset than fixed. Fixed has its place in life in different aspects. It does have its place. And if you do want to kind of grow and get further on in life, mm. then you have to adopt characteristics of that growth mindset. Yeah, being, grow that muscle. Yeah, being, I'm going to try. And if I fail, I'm going to learn from that failure yeah. and that experience. Because yeah. a lot of people don't realise that you know, the, the route to success is just littered with failure. Mm. But it shouldn't even be called failure. It should be just called lessons. Mm. It's because like, you're learning. You are learning. When you fail, you learn. You started a business, um, you shut down. You shut down because you didn't understand cash flow and because your customer service was poor. Failure, mm, more of a lesson. You've learned now that cash flow and customer services are paramount to your business. I see it as a lesson learned. You learn, you just keep going. But truthfully, do you see it that way? That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, people are taught that just failure in, its, in and of itself yeah. is bad. Like you said, it relates back to school. When you don't do well, it's, you fail as opposed to. You were close, try mm. again, try this way, try that way, try a different technique, mm. keep going. Um, so yeah, I say lessons and experiences. Yeah. It shapes you and you learn. But yes. Product of the environment. That is correct. Say. Oh yes. <laughs> but that is us. But I think what I want to hear from people is, what camp do you fall into? Are you fixed? Are you growth? Would you say you're like interchangeable? Gang, gang. <laughs> 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 GM everything <laughs> jeez um, but yeah that is us tagging in for another episode myself Ola and to make sure you find us on Instagram oh yeah, Twitter and That's also right. YouTube that is right peace out <clears throat>